Up until probably the last five years on a, on a broadly used basis, uh, nobody was really assessing ocular inflammation. Uh, Inflamadry joined the armamentarium of uh, ocular vital signs, which we now utilize on a, almost literally a daily basis, an hourly basis within the practice, to assess ocular surface status. So we look at Inflamadry or MMP9 to assess levels of inflammation and presence of inflammatory uh, cellular activity. Additionally, we also take a look at the tear film, make sure that the uh, tear osmolarity is within normal range, or if not, how that complements or enhances the ability to uh, understand the relationship between that and inflammation. Eventually, though, the bottom line is the ocular surface becomes a vehicle for us to either lose compliance if we're not managing it well, to change the visual performance of the patient, and many patients complain about poor acuity because of ocular surface issues. They already have a little bit of a cataract. They may have some macular changes. So we need to optimize the external surface to maximize the residual visual performance capacity. And then the final piece is, at the end of the day, after five or 10 years of management, if the patient ends up in surgery, and it's highly likely that if they live long enough, they will move through medication a good percentage and move into surgery. I want the surface to be as pristine as possible so that when Rob sees them, he has the best opportunity to maximize his outcomes from a surgical perspective. So I, I think, you know, we've all realized that inflammation is an inter, or the, actually the problem in ocular surface disease. I mean, this research has been around since, you know, the early studies on cyclosporin, you know, one of the first therapies we've had for reversing ocular surface inflammation. And so the information's been out there, but it's been hard to ever measure it on the average patient. Now we have a test like Inflamadry, which measures MMP9s, um, which basically this patient sitting in front of us, we can say where he's starting from baseline. And, and for me, I like to have that information before we even do anything or early in the process, and then measure change over time. If what we chose, number one, is not making the patient worse, or hopefully we see improvement. If we, maybe we can do a therapy that gets the patients off of eye drops. So I think now we have tools in the office that we can use to assess more of an individual basis versus all, you know, to put use in conjunction with study data, um, which talks about the general problem. And then we can once again measure how effective our therapy. The same thing that we do in lowering intraocular pressure. We get kind of a baseline, then we choose a therapy and measure how well we did after the effect. So that's what's I think really changed. And it's in the hands of all eye care providers. Uh, you know, if, if I'm talking with a colleague who's beginning a practice or is interested in expanding their footprint in the dry eye space, you know, we have a, a discussion that surrounds the available tools. Many of them don't have the tools yet, but they're very interested in acquiring. So things like Inflamadry become an essential part, tear osmolarity, lysamine green, you know, the basic elements for diagnosing and differentiating the diagnosis of ocular surface disease. The second part is to have them understand how that connects to their staff and how that integrates into the flow of patient care that they've developed over the years. And it can be a little bit of a disruption in the beginning, but once you uh, attribute the concept and everybody's on board, it is really a, almost a seamless intervention to be able to run those tests and continue to see the patient for other and or additional testing in the glaucoma space. And then the final part is to understand how the billing and the coding takes place in order to maximize the opportunity for the clinician to provide an excellent level of care, but also receive the compensation that's reasonable relative to the investment in time and intellectual uh, uh, activity that uh, is represented by having those elements in the office. What I'd recommend is kind of developing kind of a, a basic um, treatment template when the patient first comes in. For, and I think it involves both testing for ocular surface problems um, with inflammadry, tear osmolality I think is good too, but also all the baseline glaucoma tests, you know, OCTs of the nerve fiber layer, you know, tests that look at the angles, measuring pachymetry I think is essential in, the, in, the, in these patients. And then if they have some really disrupted surface, maybe we'll even get topography, which you never think about doing that in a glaucoma patient, but it really gives you an idea, especially if these patients were thinking about doing, you know, combined cataract and MIGS surgery, maybe the treatment op option that we're looking for. Um, that can be really, really important information to have. So I think integrating these kind of baseline ocular surface inflammation tests along with our glaucoma parameters just from the, from the bat 
that's what provides value to me. If I walk into the patient, I do my examination, um, and then I have these supporting information which has already been acquired, that just makes it everything much more seamless and, and more straightforward. It's like, yes, my exam you know, concurs with that test, it, we don't have to doubt the diagnosis, and now we can move forward into the treatment kind of arm of things. And so that's what the value I see is these tools, these technology has given these tools to be more widespread, the, the acquisition of information to have from the patient before they even get to, um, to me in a referral practice. And then we can use these same tools when we send the patient back for when they, we think they're more stable on the backside after I've done an intervention, um, they can use the same things in our office to basically continue um, the, to see how we're doing both in terms of ocular surface inflammation as well as glaucoma control. I think that um, the technology in the ocular surface space has been so uh, pleasantly advanced and is so derivative of what we need to know and how we can use that knowledge to change our patients' outcomes that it's really not a big choice. I think it's more of a matter of how to find the right space in the office, how to find the right flow, uh, changing a little bit. It's not a big change in a busy practice, it's a very small change eventually. But it is something that the doctors need to first buy into the technology and say, yes, this is valuable, and I believe that asset helps me in my patient care. And then second to that, you know, how do I fit it into the space, and how do we organize the process so that everybody benefits, both the patient first, the doctor second, and then the practice third.